What's going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer from BlueAndGold.com with our longtime beat writer uh, and contributor Todd Burlidge here at Blue and Gold Illustrated, BlueAndGold.com. And Todd, no, uh, the media got to see the first, what, five periods and stretching um, of Notre Dame's first spring practice on Thursday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Belated, I should say. Uh, Todd, kind of what were your just general impressions of, look, you've been covering this program for what, 16, 17 years. What was the difference in this Marcus Freeman practice compared to some others that you've seen? In all honesty, I found it, found it a little bit more subdued than I'm used to seeing. Typically everybody's super excited. The players, the coaches, there's a lot of hooting and hollering going on. It just echoes through that indoor practice facility there. Yesterday was very business like, um, which I found a little strange. I don't know. It, it, it's it's so easy, Mike, you know this as well as I do, to read so much into one practice, a spring practice. We only get to see five periods of it. They're not even in pads, but it's what we do, right? So I guess I thought it was a little bit subdued. Marcus Freeman, you could sort of tell, didn't really know where to stand, where to go. He spent a lot of time with the quarterbacks, which I thought was kind of interesting. And he even admitted afterwards, it's still a little bit of a work in progress on how he's going to handle some of these practices and whatnot. So I think that's what jumped out to me. Really, it's hard to glean anything from the depth chart per se. A couple things did stand out, Mike, which I'm sure we'll get to. Yeah, you wrote an article um, at blueandgold.com. Folks can check it out. Just leave the, the link in the description of this video. Um, it's also on our website. Um, you can't miss it. The word Burlage is in all caps. Um, <laughs> thoughts from... Um, Todd gives his thoughts in written form um, of that first practice and do want to touch on it. You know, you had some interesting notes again, as someone who's been covering the team for almost two decades about the leaders in the stretching calisthenics lines. Yeah. I, I picked up on this a couple of years ago, Mike, that if there's one thing, you know, they break off into units, they don't do any scrimmages in this first practice, obviously with no pads. So it's hard to get a read on the depth chart, but one thing you can get a read on is sort of the hierarchy at certain position groups, and frankly, the leadership hierarchy as well. And that comes from that sort of front line of calisthenic guys. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, 12 of them to be exact. And I remember last year, I, I really took note of that as well. First practice for the spring, looked at that line. All the team captains ended up coming from that line. A lot of your SWAT leaders off seasons are part of that line. And it's just something, it's just something of note. Um, so a lot of them aren't surprises. Isaiah Foskey, obviously, J.D. Bertrand. Um, you know, a lot of these guys aren't surprises that are on here. Josh Lug, another veteran. Avery Davis, a strong leader. Certainly, he deserves to be on that front line. But I thought it was interesting that Tyler Buckner was on that front line. I didn't expect it. I suppose you have to have a quarterback, but he's the youngest. He's a sophomore. Um, some other ones, Braden Lindsey, another grad senior. D.J. Brown, the safety Bo Bauer, another veteran. So the, the sort of common theme along here is really veteran leadership and some strong players. So I think we take away from that a little bit that Buckner will certainly start this spring season as the number one quarterback. Drew Pine worked in the line directly behind Buckner, but certainly they're going to start Buckner out judging by the drills and this calisthenics line. He's going to be QB1 to start this thing. You said Buckner the youngest. I think you meant more of Buckner as a younger guy. This is just a super young quarterback room. They got four guys on scholarship. Pine's the oldest as a junior. You got yeah. Buckner and Paul as sophomores. And then Steve Angeli, uh, the true freshman, um, who shout out to Tyler Horka and our, our uh, his uh, video recap with Ashton Pollard gave me a shout out because um, he, he really complimented Angeli and how he looked. A any thoughts on how those guys looked? I know, like, like we've said, five periods. <laughs> and some stretching. So it's not like you're getting a ton of one on ones or 11 on 11 or even seven on seven. But any, any thoughts on how those guys performed with all the quarterbacks you've seen at Notre Dame over the years? Yeah, a little bit, Mike, because I think I misspoke a little bit there for clarification. What I meant when I called Buckner the youngest, the youngest in this. In the, okay, that's fair. Okay, yeah, okay. He was the only sophomore. Yeah, you know, uh, Buckner certain, certainly took most of the snaps. Pine wasn't far behind. But then Angeli and Angeli and uh, Paulus, they were kind of way down the list. For every four or five snaps that, that Buckner took, and Ange Angeli and Paulus would get one. For the for the sake of snaps, just mm -hmm. for clarification, you're talking like just reps, like oh. when they just would throw it out to the receiver and they would go run in that little drill where they the receivers would catch the ball and try to run past the DB, just like just little drills like that. Yeah, exactly. Reps are probably okay. a better word than snaps. Okay. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
But I'll tell you what, I did have my eyes focused on Angeli, and he looks great. He, he really does physically look the part. I don't have his weight exactly in front of me, but I know he's about, about 210. Yeah, about 6'3", 210. He looks the part already as an incoming freshman, which is encouraging. His shows true. His throws were crisp and on target. He looked good. He looked poised out there. Again, there's no pressure. It's exactly what you said. Kind of a one on nobody. But certainly, you know, you could glean a little bit from his arm strength through some of these drills. And he, he really did look the part. Buckner did as well. Really, I mean, if you mess up in these drills, boy, you, you probably don't deserve to be on the Notre Dame roster. Uh, but all in all, I think Angeli sort of stole what I was what I was looking at from the quarterbacks as far, sort of the top storyline. In our Wednesday live show, we talked about bold predictions with with Ashton and Tim Hyde, and one of mine was maybe it wasn't so bold for you know me as maybe for some other folks. But I was like, Angeli's going to impress the media. Like the the dudes, <laughs> like he, he's He's already the biggest Notre Dame quarterback. He's the top. I mean, maybe oh Paulus. I should say Paulus is a big yeah, dude. Yeah. But Steve, I, I remember um, Drew Pines. Well, height, height wise, they're pretty close. Mike height wise, they're okay. really close. But yeah. I think uh, Paulus probably has probably 15, 20 pounds on him. Though. Right. Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, I haven't seen Paulus in person, but I, I want to say he's about six three and a half, six four, maybe. Um, sure. But I remember for that one spring practice we got to see. Bef- when I say we, I mean you know the media. Um, before the pandemic in March 2020, seeing Drew Pine out there, he looked tiny. And mm-hmm. you compare that to um, Steve Angeli's first spring practice, definitely um, a, a different type of dude. You know, before we started recording, Todd, you told me that, um, you know, got to really focus on some of the skill positions on offense. Any other thoughts on receivers, running backs, tight ends who stood out to you? Yeah, let me flip my page here, Mike. I was, I was looking at something else there. You know, I just I think what jumped out at me as far as running backs are concerned is what a deep stable this is. They have a lot of guys. Now, certainly somebody's going to have to emerge and, and, you know, help fill the void left by Kyron Williams. But when you look at that group, you know, of Tyree and Diggs and Estime and Price, for that matter, boy, that's a loaded running back room. I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for Tommy Reese and Freeman to figure out how to sort of appropriate all these carries. I would love to see, you know, if we ever talk about breakout players, guys that you really want to see have a bust out here. For me, it's Chris Tyree. I think the guy's overdue as a freshman. I thought he was unbelievable. Then I think he slipped back a little bit last year. I think he's a guy that is really going to have to show up for this Notre Dame offense to be successful. If he doesn't, though, there's certainly not a lot of talent behind him. I'm going to put you on the spot, Todd. Starting boundary receiver. And this is maybe some thoughts from practice. But if, if you were... Uh, Chancey Stuckey, which thank God for Notre Dame fans, you're not. Um, <laughs> we've got a starting badge no receiver, no starting field, uh, and then a slot guy. Who are you trotting out there? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep those veterans on the bench. I just am. I I, I want to see Styles and I want to see Colsey. I, I want to see these guys get their chance to start and play well. To All right, so, so do you you like Colsey in the in the boundary? Actually, yeah, Cole, Colsey in the boundary, Styles, Styles in the field. slot. Yeah. Styles in the slot. Actually, I like Styles at the field. Field? Who you like in yep. the slot? At that, you know what? It's we're, we'll see where Avery Davis fits in. He's hurt right now. I don't know. Salerno worked there yesterday, um, so we'll see if maybe he can give Avery Davis a run for his money. I kind of doubt it, uh, but certainly you can plug and play Salerno at a couple different places. I want to see these young guys emerge, and I want to see them play well. And I think you're going to get that chance. You know, I, I hate to diss on Braden Lindsay or Joe Wilkins Jr., you know, those types of things. But we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and I just think the upside is time for to get these guys like Colsey and Styles in there and then see what they can actually do over extended snaps, just kind of not spot hit stuff. Is this receiver position kind of like fool's gold? Because I'm like, man, right. I love Joe Wilkins. I think he like he looks fantastic in the clips we get to see. Um, <laughs> right. I still He's have you know thoughts of that Florida State touchdown catch. The Duke game in 2020, it was four for 45 he was. And, like, man, like, the guy's got number one receiver potential. Um, but, you know, like, it, it, there's talent in that room. But you're you're just like, man, will they Every stay year? healthy? Do they, do they emerge? And then they go off in the NFL and they're fantastic. They're like, well, right. <laughs> but, you know, they, they always have the bust out combine. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Where the where the hell was that for the last four <laughs> years or whatever the case may be? You're exactly right. So, you know, I think maybe Stucky coming in and coaching, maybe he can get to these guys earlier, get them in there more so than Dell Alexander was able to. 
All right. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up. That's been Todd Burledge. Great insight uh, from our veteran uh, contributing writer at blueandgold.com. Make sure you sign up um, to check out that article. We were talking about $1 for the one year. I mean, just a dollar alone is, or that article alone is worth a dollar. Well, this, this chat was worth a buck. There's oh, no yeah, doubt about abs- it. Absolutely. Yeah. So you get all this stuff at, at blueandgold.com. Appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll have Todd back on for a video in the coming weeks as well. Uh, hit the thumbs up and we'll catch you next time.